In this video, I've got my buddy Mr. Fibs here, and we're going to talk about all the possible ways that you might commit mistakes when performing an Obers test. So when performing an Obers, we're going to have the legs flexed to some degree. We'll cover that in more detail in a second. And we want the pelvis to be in a neutral position. And this neutral position means in all three planes. So not excessively tilted forward into anterior tilt, but also not excessively tucked back into posterior tilt. Not too far hiked up, not too far dropped down, not too far turned forward in the transverse plane, and not too far turned back. So once we have that neutral position of the pelvis, and we've selected a degree of hip flexion of the bottom leg, then we can perform the test. To perform the test, we're gonna stabilize the pelvis, making sure it stays in that neutral position throughout. We're gonna lift the leg up with the hand just below the knee. We're gonna bring the leg back into extension, and then sliding the hand down the tibia, we're gonna lower that leg down to the table, maintaining the tibia and femur in a relatively parallel position with respect to each other. Once the leg is unable to drop, and we sense that the pelvis wants to move, or the leg just can't continue to drop anymore, then we're gonna assess the amount of adduction. The ability to drop slightly below this horizontal line will be a negative test, indicating that we do have the ability to adduct, and the inability to drop below that horizontal line, what you're seeing here, will actually be a positive test reflecting an inability to adduct. Now once we're here, we can see several ways in which we can get a false positive, and we'll go through all of those in no particular order. So probably the most common is going to be where the leg doesn't come all the way back into extension, and because it's in flexion, it can access a little bit more internal rotation here at the joint, which usually makes it easier to adduct and that'll give us that false negative or that false increase in the ability to adduct. Now, a similar issue that comes up is the pelvis tilting into an anterior tilt. Right, if we think about the pelvis tilting into an anterior tilt, it's gonna bring us into relative flexion and internal rotation at the level of the femur, which will once again possibly increase the perception of adduction and thus create a false negative test. We have other issues that deal with the stabilization of the pelvis as well. And probably the most common is going to be a lack of pelvic stabilization in this frontal plane. So as we move the leg down, there can be a tendency for the pelvis to drop. This creates a relative position of abduction here, which then creates more space to move into adduction. So oftentimes the leg will stop adducting, but then this entire system will move down towards the table as a unit. And the best way to observe that is to look just above the pelvis at the lumbar spine. And usually what you'll see is this area becomes a little bit more convex relative to the shape that was observed at the start of the test. Now you may also see an increase in motion if the transverse position of the pelvis changes. As you bring the pelvis back in this transverse plane, the leg often acquires this position of external rotation to begin with, but if we are keeping the leg in the same position as that occurs, we actually pick up internal rotation. As we pick up the internal rotation, usually we can adduct a little bit easier and then can drop down. Now, before we go through the rest of the testing mistakes, let's talk about left hand and forearm placement. You'll see me using this position as I demo some of the other mistakes where the hand is below the knee, the forearm is supporting the tibia, and the foot is outside the elbow. Now, I don't usually recommend that you use this. Let's talk about why. So this Obers test is testing the ability of the leg to move in the frontal plane relative to the pelvis. That means that we don't wanna bias internal or external rotation at the leg, but instead wanna be halfway in between and then drop that femur in the frontal plane. But when we have this grip and we go to lower, what naturally happens is that the hand goes below the elbow, the foot stays above the knee, this produces internal rotation of the femur and increases the likelihood we'll be able to adduct towards the table and create an increased probability of a false negative test. Now, related to the pelvic position is the position of the bottom leg. So the bottom leg in this more extended type position is gonna to tend to allow the pelvis to move towards anterior pelvic tilt. So in this position, it's common to actually get, on average, an increase in the amount of perceived adduction. Now, if the leg, on the other hand, is bent up more towards this 90 degree position, it's gonna to tend to influence the pelvis in the opposite way. As you bring the bottom leg up like this, the pelvis is gonna to tend to tuck back towards a posterior pelvic tilt. And as it tucks back towards a posterior pelvic tilt, 
that's going to limit the amount of extension accessible to us as we perform the beginning of the test. With that inability to extend, usually also comes a relative decrease in the ability to add duct. So regardless of how you're performing the test, whether it's with a little bit less hip flexion or a little bit more, you need to make sure those are consistent between pretest and retest if you want to use the information from this test. Now, another error here relative to the lower and upper leg is going to be actually dropping that lower leg below the upper leg, and this can falsely increase the perceived amount of abduction in two ways. So as we come back, especially if we're not moving back here, or if we're pulling down like this, from the examiner's perspective, it can seem like the entire limb adducts toward the table. But if the tibia drops lower than the femur, actually the femur hasn't adducted much at all. Now the second thing that can happen here is as you bring the leg back and we twist this limb into external rotation, it can start to take the pelvis with it. Then from this position, because we're moving towards external rotation, we then open up room to move the femur relative to the pelvis into internal rotation, which makes it easier to adduct. That greater ease of adduction from this faulty position can make it seem like we have more adduction and thus a negative test. So as you can see, there's a number of ways to make mistakes in performing this test. So if you are gonna use this test, make sure you account for all these factors and perform it the same way each and every time that you use it with an individual. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, peace.